Welcome back to another Cloud Compare tutorial. Today we're going to do a quick one on exporting uh, point cloud entities and looking at how to do screenshots or screen captures uh, to export for presentation. So the data set that I've got uh, loaded up today is the Smith River in Oregon. And this is a LiDAR data set from uh, the Oregon Department of Mineral Industries, Dogami. And what we're gonna do real quick is I'm gonna create an extraction of this point cloud. So uh, in the last video, we talked about different ways to extract point the uh, different sections of the point cloud. I'm just gonna do a quick uh, cross section uh, cut on this and extract so that we can uh, just demonstrate how saving out this point cloud entity works. So just a nice thin cross section there. I'll come over to my uh, export selection as new cloud, close out the tool. And so now I've got the, uh, the two entities here. So the original point cloud and then the cross section uh, down here. So you can see that uh, pretty nice Smith rocks uh, in the Smith River here as a real nice uh, kind of climbing spot uh, with a nice view of the river. Uh, but if we want to save this point cloud out as a separate file, uh, that's easy enough to do with uh, just selecting the entity that you want to export in our DB tree over here. And then you can either hit the, uh, the save icon up here in the toolbar or you can go up into the file menu and click save up here. So um, you want to pick a location for your uh, point cloud to be saved to. And then the next thing you want to do is choose what uh, type of file you want to save your point cloud out as. Now the two that I use most commonly are an LAS point cloud for LiDAR data like this, or for a lot of my structure for motion and uh, photogrammetry data, I use the ASCII point clouds as a CSV file. Uh, so if you were gonna export this as a, a, an LAS file, you'd select that. There's some default options that you can choose, uh, but I'm gonna show you actually how to export uh, this as a standalone CSV point cloud. So we're going to select the ASCII cloud uh, option here. It's going to automatically put a .txt uh, file type ending on this. We're going to change that to CSV since we're going to save this as a common delimited file. And we'll hit save. I'm going to overwrite the one that I have in here. And the options that we get presented with here are uh, just a couple. Um, and the, the key ones are the coordinate precision, so how many decimal places after the coordinate values uh, you want to save, and then the scalar precision is the number of decimal places after each of the scalar fields or the attributes uh, that you wanna save. Uh, the, the file separator here, uh, since we're saving this as a comma delimited file, a CSV file, we're gonna keep that as comma. There are other options in here. You can do space, semicolon, or tab. Um, and then the last option here is the order in which the attributes and, and the values are, are kind of put out into the file. There's two options here. I usually just stick with the default ASC. Um, if you have an, a specific need for the other type, which is a PTS, um, you can choose that. Um, I always put in uh, column titles uh, as header information here, just so that I know which column is which. Uh, if you don't need that, you can uncheck that box. And then the last two uh, options I almost never have checked. One is a number of points. Some other uh, softwares need the number of points uh, to read in these files. And then the other option down here is to save the colors as a float value between zero and one uh, versus the default is as an eight bit, or an eight bit value of, of zero to 255. So generally leave those last two unchecked. So I'll say, okay, that'll export out. And if we go into our file dialog here, um, we can go find that file up in, uh, I just dumped these in my user folder. So here's that Smith Rocks uh, 
CSV file. And so you can see the preview over here on my window of that CSV file. So you can see the header information up here at the top and then each line or each row in that file is an individual point in the data set. So the other option when saving uh, entities is actually to save the entire kind of document, if you will, or the, the entire DB tree over here as a kind of standalone um, option. And so in order to do that, what we'll do is we need to select all of the entities that we want to save out as a kind of standalone cloud compare file. And the two ways that you can do that are if you want to select everything in your DB tree is just to select one entity and then you can click or uh, on your keyboard, you can do control A to do select all. So that'll select all of the entities in your DB tree. Or if you just want to save individual items out, um, you can be selective about that by selecting the first one and then holding control on your keyboard and selecting all of the other entities that you want to save out. So once you have those selected, you can go up again, you can either hit the save button on the toolbar or go up into the file menu. And in this case, we actually want to change the save as type to a cloud compare entities file, a .bin file. So select this first option, cloud compare entities. We're gonna give this a name. Call this Smith Rocks and then um, we'll hit save and that'll think for a second. And so that's basically saved out both of these um, entities as a standalone file that we can bring back in. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I'm actually going to close out all of these, uh, both of those clouds. And if we go into our open dialog here, we can scroll down wherever you put this and so here you can see that I've got smithrocks.bin as a file option here. Now, if you don't see that, um, chances are you might need to change your, um, your open file dialog uh, file types here to all is usually where I leave it just so that I can find all of the different file types. Uh, but if you wanted to look just specifically for bin files, you could select uh, just the bin file uh, filter here. We'll just leave it on all for now. So if I click that and say open, you can say it's opening the bin file. And what you'll see is both of those uh, point clouds come back uh, into the DB tree just like they were uh, before we deleted them. So we've got the section and the full point cloud. Um, so that's how to save individual point clouds and uh, kind of the larger picture of an entire DB tree. Um, the one caveat that I will say with the DB tree saving is that you do need to be careful about how many entities you save at once. Since Cloud Compare is basically saving all of that data out um, into one file, if you have lots of big point clouds, uh, those file sizes will start to get a little unruly and, and quite large. So just be aware of that. So the next thing that we're going to look at is how to export some pretty screenshots for presentations, um, which is what I usually use this for is for PowerPoint or poster presentations at conferences. Uh, but then I also uh, have my students use the same uh, method for exporting uh, screen captures for uh, lab assignments or, or their reports. Um, the kind of the option that a lot of people go for is just to use a screen capture tool. So either just a print screen or something like Snagit, or I use GreenShot for a lot of um, uh, screen grabbing. And that works okay, but it doesn't get you the full resolution of the point cloud and a lot of the elements. And so Cloud Compare actually has a built-in utility to export or what, what they call render the, uh, the view to a file. Um, so the way that we get to that is uh, up through the display menu up here at the top. So display and then the option here is render to file. 
But before you do that, you want to kind of get the view that you want to show your audience uh, kind of in the window. And it'll basically clip out the entire extent of the 3D window here. And so if you want to make this bigger or smaller, okay, you can actually kind of change the, the size by using some of the handles here. And you can see that the size of the the, the screen the window here kind of pops up there in the corner. So if you have a very specific size that you're looking for, you can uh, play with the the window size here, or if you or if you change the entire uh, cloud compare window, just with the click and drag on the corner, you can see that we're changing the the new size down there, and so you can get that to a very specific kind of uh, pixel width and height values uh, if you're looking for a very specific output size. So we've got this set up. Um, I've got the color bar turned on here. If you want a color bar for your specific output, uh, make sure you turn that on over in your uh, properties window. And then if we go to display, render to file, the output dialog here is pretty uh, intuitive. There's just a file name. So I'm just going to overwrite a file I have already on my desktop. Um, the zoom factor here is just uh, how big of an image you're going to output. And so on most high resolution monitors, just using the zoom of one, which just gives you kind of the default number of pixels that you saw down there in the corner earlier uh, for the size. Um, and you can see that in the dialog here, it tells you how big that image is going to be in pixels. So this one's going to be 1976 by 1320. If you wanted to kind of up the resolution um, and up, up the number of pixels in the image, you can change this um, to whatever zoom factor you want. So if I put in two, it's going to double that. Three would triple uh, the number of pixels in the image. So if you're looking for super high resolution images for publication, um, sometimes you can do uh, increase the zoom factor and it'll kind of increase the number of pixels in the image. I usually just go with one. Again, my monitors are pretty big and high resolution. Um, if you're doing it on a small laptop, you might want to up the zoom factor to get a, little, a few more pixels uh, to keep the image uh, nice and crisp. Um, the two other options down here I usually have checked. I encourage you to play with those to see what happens. Um, the first one is don't scale features, which is things like the point size or the line thicknesses of the scale bars and the fonts. And then the other thing is to either render or not render overlay items. So things like the scale bar down here in the lower left or the lower right, excuse me, the um, little uh, orientation tetrahedron down here, the color bars, Etc. Um, so once you're happy with those options, you can say OK. The export is pretty quick. And if I go find that on my desktop here, you can see that I've got that static image uh, now uh, ready to go. So I can bring that up in any photo editor or photo. Uh, uh, photo program and edit it if I want to, resize it, uh, do whatever you need to. Um, the one thing that you'll see here, uh, which is something I actually do quite often, is I leave this yellow box on <laughs> uh, by accident. Um, and so that's just the bounding box of the point cloud that we had selected in our DB tree. And so if I go back to Cloud Compare here, you can see that in my DB tree, I have the, the big point cloud selected, and so it's got the bounding box displayed out here in the, the 3D view. If you don't want that in your export, uh, the easiest way to get rid of it is just to click on a blank area in your DB tree, and that will unselect any of the point clouds and get you uh, a point cloud without the bounding box on it. Um, the really nice thing about this tool as well is that you can do repeatable uh, outputs. So let's say we had a top-down view and we wanted to show elevation. We could render that to a file and then 
all we'd have to do to show the same view and the same size image with a different attribute is just to change, in this case, our scalar field. And let's say we'll look at something like intensity. And so we can just go back and say, render to file. We're going to export this as an intensity view. Say save, yes, OK. And that would export out that same exact kind of snapshot view um, as we just had um, with that different value or that different attribute on it. So this is a good way to do like side by side comparisons because you get nice consistent uh, outputs. So with that, that's kind of exporting point clouds and exporting uh, screenshots. And so uh, in the next one, we'll look at some pretty advanced options with uh, change detection.